You know, one of the most fascinating people in the Bible that wrote the Bible, and you wouldn't think that they wrote the Bible, but they did write a chapter in the Bible, was Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, and he ruled an empire stretching from Persia all the way to Egypt. How could a sinful and prideful man, you would wonder, be able to write a chapter in the holy book that we read today? It's quite interesting, really. It starts out as Nebuchadnezzar giving glory to God for a dream that he had. And Daniel interpreted that dream. Now let's dive in to Daniel chapter 4 and see what this interesting story holds for us. Daniel chapter 4, starting in verse 1, says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. It's a proclamation of peace right there from Nebuchadnezzar. He was also known as a great warrior, too, and you wouldn't have thought of him as a man of bringing peace. But his empire did bring peace and prosperity, even though he had had to subdue many nations to bring it. I thought it good to show you the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me. Hmm. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God will not change. God will not be put aside. God will never be forgotten. Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges this. And he gives God high praise. He says, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Seek ye first the everlasting kingdom of God. And his righteousness, his everlasting righteousness. That's what we should be focused on. Seeking the everlasting kingdom of God. Amen. This is what Nebuchadnezzar now speaks of. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Nebuchadnezzar was a man that dreamed a lot of dreams. You, may, you wonder sometimes, why would God show this particular king things that were to come? It's, it's very fascinating, because you wouldn't think that this man would be someone who would even acknowledge or glorify God, but here you are, right here reading what he says and giving God praise for it. Therefore, I shall, therefore, I made a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known unto the, the interpretation of the dream. So verse 8, we skip to verse 8 and it says, but at last Daniel came in before me whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Before him, I told him the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth me. Tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. All right, let's stop for just a minute on this. Nebuchadnezzar asks Daniel to interpret this dream for him, right? And he says, I know the spirit of the holy gods is with you. Nebuchadnezzar knows this about Daniel. He doesn't understand fully that the spirit of God is, is with him. He he calls them spirits, the spirits of the gods, as in plural. He would consider Daniel's God to be just one of many. But he's going to come to realize and learn that Daniel's God is not just one of many, but is the God Most High. 
That is what Nebuchadnezzar is about to learn. He's, he says, I know you have something. I know you have something. I just can't pinpoint it. I want what you have. But please interpret this dream for me so I may understand more. Amen? So, thus were the visions in my head, in my bed, and I saw, behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. And obviously we know that this tree that Nebuchadnezzar is seeing is him. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. And the leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all. The breasts of the field and had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in, and the burrows thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. All right. Nebuchadnezzar's empire. He was the mighty tree that kept everything in order, that fed everybody, sustained everybody. His fruit was the fruit that the world fed off of. Now, Nebuchadnezzar served many gods, and he even considered himself a god, probably. All major empire kings did at that time. But you see, he was about to be cut down to size because he acknowledged himself. You see, in the scriptures, pride become, comes before the fall, right? Well, Nebuchadnezzar obviously considers himself mighty and all-powerful, and there is no king that can stand up to him. He thinks he has all the players and all the pieces under his thumb. But he's about to realize something that's about to happen. So, let's skip over to verse, let's go to verse 13 here. I saw in the visions of my head and upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and the holy one came down from heaven. And he cried out aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, and cut off his branches, and shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Cut the tree down. Cut it down and bring it down to size and take away the fruit. Scatter them. Let the pride of this man be cut short. Let him see with his own eyes now what God is all about and how powerful and how almighty God is. He is not one of many gods. He is the God Almighty. So, verse 15 says this, Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man, and let beast heart be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. This manner is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth the kingdom of men and giveth it to whom he will setteth up over the basin of men. Remember in the scriptures, God says that he removes kings and he sets up kings. You may not like whoever rules, but no matter what, I am the one who appoints the leader of that time. Whether the, you love them or hate them, there is a reason that they are in place right now. Whether you want to believe it or not, they are in place and in season for a purpose. We may not understand it. God does, though. So, let's see what's going on with uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the stream. Let's read some of the notes here. 
So in this note, people wondered... Yes. In this particular note, it says, A year later, when the king was boasting in his heart about the great empire he had built, he was stricken with a rare disease thought to be lycanthropy. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right, because I'm not quite sure. But it's from the Greek word leukos, meaning a wolf. And the word anthropos, meaning a man. The proud and the arrogant king was turned into a wolf man. And that's very fascinating, because you hear these crazy stories about wolf men. Well, it's very possible that many people today... Well, not many people. It's, it's a rare thing. But some people might suffer from it. And you might hear these crazy stories of people howling at the moon or whatever. They're not so crazy. It is true that this stuff has happened. Bigfoot? Hey. Some people suffer from things that we don't know. And it's just... It's sad, really, because they don't know that God can heal them. But in Nebuchadnezzar's case, he was very blessed to have a company of people around him to protect him, even though he had gone crazy mad, because he was still the king. So they did what they could to take care of him, even though he went wild. So, let's read more about this uh, disease. He grew long hair and had fingernails, and ate grass like an ox. After seven years, his sanity returned, and he gave the Hebrew God all the glory and honor, realizing that God alone controls kingdoms according to decrees he makes in vision. See, when this happened, after we're, getting, we're jumping ahead a little bit here, but when this happened, Nebuchadnezzar was obviously in pride, he obviously didn't know the Psalms in David, where it says, Psalm 1, Blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his uh, delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. And in his season his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord, do, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Psalm 1. Nebuchadnezzar did not know Psalm 1, obviously. Because he was a prideful man that believed in his own self-worth. He believed in his magicians, his gold, his army. He had everything. Nothing could withstand him, right? So we skip on down to where uh, Daniel, let's see, let's read here, where Daniel gives him the interpretation, right? Well, in verse 11, it says, The king grew and was strong. Verse 11 says, The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of the earth. No, I read that. We're going to skip all that out. Okay. So, let's see. Let's go to... Verse 20, this is where Daniel reads the interpretation, or tells the interpretation to the king. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was in it meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches and the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king. It's you. It's you, Nebuchadnezzar. You're that tree. 
Thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown. And reached unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher, and a holy one coming coming down from heaven, and saying, Hew down the tree, and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass, and tender of grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This interpretation, O king, and this is the decree from the Most High, which is come upon my Lord, the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make unto thee eat grass as an ox, and they shall wet with thee the dew of heaven, and seven times shall it pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whom Soever he will. That was the decree right there from the prophet Daniel unto Nebuchadnezzar. Well, at least by this time, Nebuchadnezzar had respect for the prophet's word. Because if he had heard this before, he would have probably had Daniel killed. But Daniel had a reputation with Nebuchadnezzar by now. To where Nebuchadnezzar knew that if he said it, you know, it was so, right? He knew not to kill the prophet, as he had done previously. He was going to kill everyone because they couldn't tell him the interpretation of his dream. This time, Nebuchadnezzar was more reserved in his judgment for killing prophets because he didn't like the word. Just because you may like or dislike the word, don't kill the messenger that bringeth it. If it's a word from God, pray on it. And if it comes true, if it comes true, and like in, it's like that in the story of Jeremiah, if it's of God, it will happen, right? And if it's not of God, you know, it won't happen. Wait and see, right? Let God's word be true and every man be a liar. If the prophet speaks lies, you know, Nebuchadnezzar would have grounds to kill Daniel in his own mind anyway. But let's read on. So verse 29 says this, At the end of twelve months, he, Nebuchadnezzar, walked in the palace of the king of Babylon. And the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Verse 33 says, And the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. Nebuchadnezzar finally went mad. The word came true. And the prophet's word was so. His kingdom was now ripped away from him. It's a wonder how they had not killed Nebuchadnezzar during this time, if he had gone mad, he must have had some people protecting him during that time. Because in verse 36, it says, At the same time, my reason returned unto me for the glory of my kingdom and my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. It took seven years. But finally everything was restored back unto the king. Verse 37 says, 
Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose words are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Nebuchadnezzar understood pride, and then comes the fall if you are prideful. Don't be prideful. You'll go mad with your own vanity and your own glory. You may think you're greater than much of... (laughs) You may think you're greater than many people, but you're not. We're all human beings, and we're all made equal. But you see, if you exalt yourself even to the point where you think you can do no wrong, that's when you're cut down like a tree and you realize that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Nebuchadnezzar was a man who you didn't think would write a chapter in the Bible. But he did. He wrote this himself and gave glory to God. Glory to him in the highest. His reason came back to him. It just goes to show you Anyone can have a change of heart. Anyone can be redeemed if you are willing to be redeemed. You want to be saved? Have an open heart into Christ. Submit yourself to God. And in the end, give Him the glory and praise for all that He's done for you. Because finally, when Nebuchadnezzar When his sanity came back to him, he knew there was no other gods. Is Nebuchadnezzar in heaven today? Well, you know, that's an interesting question. You know, if... I would like to think so, strange as it sounds, but you know, if... He was put in the Bible for a reason, and he wrote a chapter in the Bible. And finally, at the end of his life, he gives praise and honor to glory unto God. The prideful man learned his lesson. And an evil man was redeemed. It's an interesting thought. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.